Old school Ford Bronco 08 F-150. This thing was brought in for a no start. It's had um, parts thrown at it. It's got a new ignition coil. Apparently it has no spark from what I'm told by my brother. It also has a new ignition module put in and just laying here, which I don't think is good. I think those need to be grounded. Uh, inside the truck, this would be the ignition module off of the truck and you can see it's bolted to a, a piece that um, allows for heat dissipation. That was the big problem on these back in the days. Being mounted on the distributor, they'd fail from heat. So when they remote mounted them, that fixed that problem. I don't know if that needs to be grounded on the back side to function. It certainly needs to be grounded and put there for heat distribution. But I'm just turning the key on, making sure I'm in park. Hesitate to set a parking brake on an older car, but <laughs> let's turn the radio off. Come out here. Uh, I just know these systems very, very well from working on hundreds and hundreds of them back in the day. And uh, I have this little remote that I can hook up uh, to this starter S post, All right? You go to here with that and then just go to battery positive with that. And then come stand over here to the side in case I don't want to run you over in case it's not really in park. We'll just slam it into the back of my truck. But when I hit this, I can crank it. That's so cool. So that way you don't have to crank it for me and I can do all my checks out here. Dude, that's super that's cool. just the starter solenoid on a Ford. So any access you can get to those that had that, you can do this. And I have the key on, which allows me to have spark. It can be really, really dangerous if you're working on a manual transmission. Oh, there's a big oil slick underneath this truck. This thing needs to go. Yeah, probably. Um, but anyway, there's safety issues involved when you do this. You, you need to make sure you're in park. You need to make sure, you, you know, park and brake set and that if it's a manual transmission, you might never want to do this remote start cranking. But this is going to allow me to let Caleb be cameraman and leave my brother alone and do the checks that I want to do. And I'm going to start with just going right to the coil and I'm gonna crank it, have it jump through my test light to ground. No spark whatsoever. Standard practice that even applies on today's coil unplug systems is the next check I'm gonna do, which is looking for coil control. In this case, test light is lit on that wire. Test light is lit on that wire, which it should be on both. I am assuming the pink wire is my coil positive and this brownish wire, maybe tan wire is coil negative. I'm gonna crank it and watch for a flicker in the test light. Pretty steady on that one. Come over here, do this one. Identical. So here's the thing. When you see identical test light patterns, if you wanna call it, on coil positive and coil negative, that means there's no control. And so if there's no control, why would you put an ignition coil in it? That test alone that I just showed you says, don't put a coil in it, there's no control. And yet there's a new coil. How hard was that with a test light? There is a variable to this test uh, where you can have no test light control, no, no flicker, and it's from a shorted coil. And I have those case studies if you're looking for that information, that would be in my chapter 22 playlist on Scanner Danner Premium and in my classes where I talk about coil negative control and using a test light. Um, I also have some uh, videos right here on YouTube that cover the same and it would be in my chapter 22 playlist right here on YouTube. So, so I'm not seeing control there, that coil being new. Uh, the chances of it being shorted or slim to none. What we do next is we move to the module, which controls the coil and do a couple checks there. The next step I wanna do, I, I don't know if this needs to be grounded. I feel like the, that it does. It doesn't show me a ground, an external ground. This ground would be a ground between the distributor. It may actually get a ground through the housing here. 
so it might not need to be grounded uh, we'll check that first uh, and then make sure that we have power there on the uh, third one up from the bottom. I think this is in order. I know the top one's the pip, so uh, that should be correct. And then we're gonna do a check on this. We're gonna use the test light for all of it. The key is still on. My test light would light here if that needed a ground. The other thing is I'll hold it there. Take my ignition, crank it. Yeah, all right. So if that needed a ground, that would have actually lit my test light because there is no ground with it not being bolted up. Not the case. It grounds over at the distributor is what that test tells me. Um, the uh, pink and green, this should be a power feed to the module. And we want to maintain that while I'm cranking. And that's good. And then the pip signal I really need a voltmeter for this or a meter, but we should be able to trigger this module to fire that coil off the pip wire, which is what color is that? It's a gray something, gray with an orange, yeah. So this is my pip wire, this guy. That's not gonna light my test light because that's a low voltage signal, but we can check it anyway. You're gonna crank it, There's nothing there. If this module's good, I should be able to make this coil fire uh, with my test light. Let me get a spark tester installed. Is that the one you removed the glass? Like yeah, so it wouldn't give us a glare. <laughs> now we'll be able to see spark. Test light's on battery positive. I'm connected right to the battery. I touch a ground, test light lights. And what I'm gonna try to do is B, the pip signal is basically the signal that comes from the distributor and it's sent to the module and engine computer for RPM and for spark control. And so from memory, this is a 10 volt square wave and I should be able to generate that with my test light with this plugged in. If I just touch on and off of the pip wire, this top wire, just gonna push it in and out and we should be able to make it spark. Did you hear the fuel pump run? I did. You hear the fuel pump relay turn on? Yeah. And then I heard a spark too. Oh, nice. That proves again that the module housing doesn't need a ground. The fact that this is working, uh, it, it needs to be, you know, heat sink and all that. But yeah, so you're just taking it, right? I'm just creating a square wave. So where we are right now, if you're old school, you're going to put a pickup in the distributor in this. Um, this being remotely mounted um, helps in the troubleshooting of the two because on the distributor mounted ones, you can't ever really see the pickup signal from the outside. It's because it's inside the, of the distributor. But with this design, we can. So we should go a little bit further. Understanding circuit design, pull up, pull down circuitry, the, that this is a Hall effect signal and generating that Hall effect signal myself with just using a test light and a little common knowledge. And I'm pretty confident, 99% sure at this point that this needs a distributor pickup. It never needed the module, it never needed the coil. And the nice thing too about what I'm talking about here is all of this, technology all of this thought process that that you use here applies directly to today's cars it's a hall effect hall effect circuits are either pull up or pull down um, when you're dealing with uh, ignition coils coil control or no coil control um, it's all the same stuff so learning your fundamentals doesn't matter what year the car is truck is learn your fundamentals you can apply it to everything all right, so I broke out the lab scope because I can't really show you the Hall effect signals, the distributor pickup, for lack of a better term. Without the lab scope, I can't really show it to you. So uh, I just first want to get a voltage reading of the pip wire. Remember, my key's still on. Yeah, it's fixed at zero. And then I'll just kind of show you guys the same check. You'll see the, the square wave I'm generating on the pip wire right? Making it spark each time. Cool stuff. Um, the other thing is 
when I crank this, this is the one we should have a square wave on it. And I believe from memory, it's a zero to 10 volt square wave. So I'm gonna crank it over. I, well, I didn't expect it to start. When my brother said this was towed in, it was an intermittent fall, because when they first towed it in, it started for them a few times, and then it became a no start. When you trigger the pip wire, what I was doing is I'm generating the square wave that the distributor would, and really, I just woke up that hull effect. It's still a faulty distributor. Um, you saw the square wave. Now we have 10 volts on that circuit, and that's gonna be dependent on the position of the I should be able to bump it that's why I'm doing this the position of the <laughs> my thumb the position of the windows in the hall effect um, I should be yeah so see now it's zero and then if I bump it again now it's a 10 all I'm doing is moving the shutters in and out of that hall effect um, we probably can make this this uh, fail again if we would run it long enough, maybe wiggle and get it to be a no start again. It's kind of nice for us now that it runs because now we don't have to wait for a part and we're done. Just put a distributor pickup in it and be done with it. That's, that's what this needs. So you probably the insulating glass. <laughs> you probably you probably caught my face on camera and you were wondering why I made that face. That's why I made that face because I looked over and I realized, oh wait, that's arcing like crazy. That's why it's running so poorly. So let's take my spark tester off now and uh, connect that back up. <laughs> Let me start it back up. We're just gonna tell Danner to put a distributor pickup in this. Oh. I can't crank it from here because I have my solenoid wire off. This, this fan is really dangerous because there's no shroud. I don't really want to, I got to be careful. I want to reach down and wiggle the wiring to the distributor. beat on it. I was gonna check the powers and grounds on the hull effect, but like, I don't really feel like I need to do that now. I mean, once I triggered the pip circuit, it made it spark, it was enough to wake that hull effect back up. It's a, a hull effect is not just a simple device. It, it has electronics inside of it just to show it, let me get this out of the way. Yeah, I'm not doing it. I mean, I, the teacher in me wants to do it just to prove to the community that, you know, this was not a hull effect power or ground issue. And uh, while I'm talking here, let's, let's get a shot of this. When we're talking about what's in the distributor, they're showing an, an ignition ground and a shield. That's just a, those are ground. So grounds in the housing. And then you have your pip wire, which is your signal wire for the hull effect. And then your, it says CMP power, camshaft position. It's not cam, 
Um, but that's your power and then ground. So the Hall Effect signal is pip, the power, and ground. When it comes to this working now after we did the pip test, which is me giving it a signal, um, that just proves that our fault is in that Hall Effect pickup. So it needs a distributor pickup, Dan. Okay. Um, and I was just- That was my guess, but yeah. I, I mean, they did everything else. <laughs> well, I mean, it does have a new coil and new module on <laughs> yeah. it, but I mean, it could have been a wiring problem, yeah. but I had, um, I, I just put my test light to battery positive and touched the pip and I made it spark. And then after I did that, I fired it right up. So that back feeds the Hall effect and you know, can wake it up, which is exactly what we had. And I was saying, I'm not checking powers and grounds because uh, w that wouldn't fix a power or ground problem. And so I'm just so not putting- you got spark without it even spinning. You made the spark- I made the spark the, first. All the circuit other than the input yep. from the- yep from the Hall Effect Ex distributor Exactly, and so the, the, on, the only other thing would be, an in, th with that input, the only variable would be a lack of power or lack of ground to that Hall Effect, and those wouldn't all of a sudden come back by me being over here yeah. and exercising the PIP signal wire, so. Yeah, because you were even doing the, the, you weren't even doing the power side or ground side, you were doing the signal side. Signal so side, it, yep. it, it makes sense. Yep, so put a distributor pick up in this, we're done, I don't even have to show an after, because I got that the- with do these, can you do that on these distributors or do you got to buy a distributor? Can you change them? I don't know. You might be able to change. Good luck getting parts on this nowadays too, man. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. So final thought on this one is, um, I guess maybe don't be a parts changer. Take what you learn on a 1993 Ford Bronco F-150 and uh, you can apply it to everything out in the field. It's pretty awesome. See you guys next time. One last comment. I'm sorry, because I know some of you guys are gonna question it. No, we are not leaving the module like this. Once my brother tells him what to do, the owner, uh, actually the owner brought it to us this way, so it's really not our responsibility anyway, but uh, we're not just gonna put a pickup in this and not and leave the module like this, okay? It needs to be remounted for its heat sink.